Hi, this is Dr. Emily Scherning with AR, and I'd like to say hello to all of our friends in Indiana. Let me say, I was not expecting a great outlook here, but I kept finding more and more things to change my mind. There are challenges ahead for the state, sure, but it's very hard for me to see a future where Indiana is not going to have to change their motto. Right now, they say they're the crossroads of America, but they're very much going to be a destination. Let's get into it. So first, we'll look at sort of kind of the hardest news first, which is the change in the summer heat. If you look at Indiana's heat map now, which if we check out the key, these colors show the number of days that historically have been over 86 in the summer. And we can see that Indiana, especially Northern Indiana, traditionally has a pretty cool if humid summer. If we look though towards mid-century under RCP 4.5, we see dramatic changes in the color of this state. Looking, if we check back to the contemporary map, a lot more like it does down here at the border between Kentucky and Tennessee than Indiana does today. So when we are looking at substantial changes, which we'll put that change map up again here, it's good to ground that in the experiences that we have in our bodies today, so that although you are looking at an additional month of summer heat, it's not the kind of summer that say no one in your lifetime, no one in your area has experienced for Indiana. It's also worth noting that Indiana has a pretty good relative forecast here for the Midwest. There are parts of Missouri, for example, that are looking at a two month increase in days over 86. There's no part of Indiana that's looking at more than additional month. So when we're talking hot, we're talking change, it's good not to make it scarier in your head than it really is. And it's good to note that this is a relatively good forecast for the Midwestern region in terms of summer increases. Now, one of the other big challenges that the federal government describes for the Midwest is extreme heat waves. They're projected by mid-century to be about 13 degrees over current highs lasting for five days. There are concerns that these, in some parts of the Midwest, these heat waves could be high mortality events, but they don't have to be. That's very much the kind of situation, a heat emergency, where most of the danger is being caught flat-footed. And for you, Indiana, I'm happy to report that your forecast extreme heat your once in a decade biggest heat waves as we approach mid-century are likely to have highs much closer to 100 degrees than 110. Unless you're the, in the extreme southern end of Indiana, you are more likely to experience extreme discomfort than life-threatening danger from the projected increase in heat wave intensity. 100 degrees and humid is no joke, but as long as you're not outside doing physical labor, most people will be okay. The fact that you're likely to avoid life-threatening heat is going to push your state towards the top end of my Midwestern regional ranking. We'll see exactly where Indiana will go on the list as I work my way through the region. But let's get back to the forecast. Let's take a look at um, winter temperatures through the lens of plant hardiness zones. And here I'm happy to say we've got good news again. So here's Indiana today with the plant hardiness zones based on contemporary data mostly zone six, little bit of zone five up towards the north, little bit of zone seven down at the extreme southern border. Let's check out the change as we approach mid-century. Not too bad. You're gonna lose that zone five. You're gonna get some more zone seven coming up, but much of the state that was zone six is going to remain zone six. And please note, that your shoreline has relatively good conservation, especially compared to Michigan, which is seeing a big heat up on the shoreline. Let's look at that one more time. Pretty good shoreline conservation, right? And I do wanna point out the fact that although we have nice conservation through this pretty populated area here, a lot of fair sized cities here, Indianapolis is projected to have a heat island that will make it have locally milder winters than the rest of the area. So what does this mean, these changes that we're seeing? It means that you're gonna have a really good chance for many of your trees that will be stressed by the increased heat to have a return to conditions that are stabilizing for them in the winter. This conservation of plant hardiness zones is really good for your mature plants and their survival through mid-century. But take a second and think about those um, changes in the lake. And you saw that Michigan is looking at more changes uh, on their coastal shoreline than you are. Let's take a second and look at what's projected to happen in the part of Lake Michigan near Indiana. We'll pull that up from the National Climate Assessment itself. 
And you can see this key here, this dark blue color is the change in ice duration, showing very little change in ice duration by the Indiana border. And we see no trend in summer surface water temperature here by the Indiana border. So the Indiana Dunes, that's a very valuable, very beautiful recreation area, newly a national park. We expect the climate there to be relatively much more conserved than other parts of the Lake Michigan shoreline. It's nice news, it's good to know. So there is a lot of other news related to the water outlook that I'd like to get into as we talk about this good news for the lake, for relative stability around the lake. So your water outlook has a few challenges, but it's not that you aren't gonna have water. Let me say your utility companies, both water and power, are actually pretty on top of your game. They're using good climate data to increase capacity by mid-century in all of your utilities. So it's not that you're facing a water shortage, which is a big problem nationally, but you do have a problem with polluted water, with pollution from both agricultural and industrial sources. With how increasingly precious water will be across the country, working to step up your game on water quality now will likely pay off in the future. That's especially true because any runoff issues you have contributing to pollution now are only going to get more intense. Indiana is part of the Midwest that is likely to see substantial increases in precipitation. I've seen figures ranging from 8 to 10 percent more winter spring precipitation, with most of that falling towards spring as rain. That can be a real challenge for planting. It gives kind of a push in the direction of perennial crops. If you get a perennial crop in, and there are some very interesting things going on right now with the commercial development of perennial grains and legumes. You can avoid some of the unpleasantness of trying to find a dry enough time to plant in the spring every year. So winter spring precipitation is forecast to go up, but summer precipitation is forecast to decrease by mid-century. Your state fortunately is already using a lot of irrigation for agriculture. You're, so you're sort of pre-adjusted to the likelihood that precipitation alone will be increasingly unlikely to meet your agricultural water needs. These seasonal changes in the water and patterns will mean that storing that excess winter spring precipitation for use in the summer is gonna be increasingly important. And that's the sort of thing you can build some resilience for in your home with simple rain barrel systems and with rain gardens. Both of those home features help reduce runoff related water pollution and help get water either into storage for later use or into the ground in a healthy way contributing to healthy aquifer recharge. Aquifers can be polluted by runoff, so this is a real concern crucial to Indiana's future success. Let's take a little more time to think about plants as we put all this information together. That conservation of the winter cold in much of the state is gonna be good for your trees. The extra heat in the summer will stress them out, but if they've got that stable period to hold on to, that should help prevent a lot of the potential for mass tree death. At mid-century, the projected vapor pressure deficit for plants, which is kind of a measure of how much water plants will be losing through their leaves to heat, is a 20% increase in the eastern part of the state and a 30% increase in the western half of the state. In that increased heat, it makes sense that plants would lose more water, that they would need more water. But like we've explored, the water outlook for Indiana, while not without challenges, is pretty solid for the state. If you're looking for resilient plants for your place in Indiana, I wanna take another opportunity to share this breakdown from the Forest Service. Here we go, and we're gonna navigate through this together. So this is the National Tree Atlas, and where you're gonna to wanna to go to look at uh, plants for your state, I would go to this regional summaries, and if you check out the breakdown for the Midwest, you can get a PDF to pop up, at the bottom here, it'll show you a bunch of new species that are ready to move into the Midwest by mid-century. And if you dig into it, a lot of these are really species that should be moved into Southern and Central Indiana by mid-century. And if you happen to be in an urban area, I'm gonna show you really quick, it's very likely that you will be able to find your particular region. Yep, a lot of your larger population centers in Indiana have a PDF that you'll be able to download and it will tell you exactly what tree species the Forest Service recommends introducing to your homes and cities. It's pretty cool. I was looking at some of the maps all stacked together while I was getting ready to make this forecast. 
And I'd like to highlight the area around and north of Terre Haute, which is a nice mixed forest and agricultural area right now. I would look at that area as having particularly good potential. If you look at the heat map, you'll be able to see an outline of the area. There's a zone around Terre Haute that's already kind of warm in the summer. Right in there, there's nice preservation of all of your change factors relative to other places in Indiana and other places in the Midwest. Don't get me wrong. Even in that kind of conservation hotspot, it's going to change, but we're talking about relatively little change, relatively manageable change. And you know, that's not a bad summary for the state as a whole. Indiana, you got your problems, particularly related to water management and water quality, but I found a ton of evidence that you're already working hard on those problems and making real progress. There's great evidence of forward thinking people in your infrastructure business. I was impressed. Your state is preparing for an increase in population, and you should be, because you've got one solid outlook. You also have a delightful absence of particularly deadly new threats. No huge wildfire hotspots, no looming desertification, probably no deadly heat waves. You'll have challenges with extreme weather, both in water and windstorms, and you'll have associated challenges with flooding, as we often do in the Midwest. But no emergent deadly threats? Maybe that sounds like a low bar but it makes you look great by comparison to so many other states, including other states in the Midwest. There are a lot of people in the Southwest and along the Gulf and the Mid-Atlantic coasts who are gonna be looking for places to go by 2050. Indiana might not be on people's radars as a destination now, but it should be. It's a good place for investment. This is Dr. Scherning with AR signing out. Please like and subscribe to help get the message out there. There is hope. We can prepare for what's coming. Let's get ready.